If you were to ask a hundred amateur watchmakers, how do you repair acrylic watch crystals? 99% of them are gonna say PolyWatch. Although PolyWatch is a pretty good product, it certainly has its limitations. If you're working on vintage watches, you're gonna have to deal with acrylic watch crystals that are in all kinds of conditions. Today, we're gonna look at the limitations of PolyWatch and some other methods that you can use to make your vintage watch crystals look brand new again. If you follow these methods that I'm gonna show you today, you will be able to get consistent results faster, for less money, and with a whole lot less work. So pull up a chair to the bench, grab a cup of coffee, and let me show you how I do it. So the first question a lot of people ask is, Acrylic watch crystals are so cheap. Why would you spend time trying to fix one when you can just replace it? Well, actually, there's a lot of reasons to repair versus replace. The first reason is it could be a fancy crystal, meaning a crystal that has a certain shape that is extremely hard to find. Some people just want to keep the watch as original as possible because sometimes acrylic crystals have a very unique tension ring inside them. Maybe you have tried to replace the crystal and you've ordered three or four and none of them seem to fit. Or maybe it's just a matter of time. You don't wanna spend the time trying to figure out what crystal it is, ordering it, paying shipping for it, waiting four or five days, when you could literally polish the crystal in about five minutes and move on to something else. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to do a comparison between two different methods of polishing acrylic crystals that you can use and compare the two to see how effective they are. So to start with, we have two brand new GS crystals. And I'm going to take the crystals with a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. And we're just going to, we're going to sand them and we're going to basically scratch them up to simulate what years of abuse would look like on a crystal. All right, so both of them have been scratched up equally. Let's look at them under the microscope real quick, just so you can kind of see where we're starting at. So you can see the first crystal. I mean, it's so scratched up, you can't really see under it. And here's our second crystal. The larger crystal, this one, is the one that we're going to use the sandpaper method on. And this first crystal is the one that we're going to use the polywatch on. All right, so to start with polywatch, if you read the container, it says to use a soft piece of cotton. In this case, we're going to use a new white cotton glove. We're going to add a small amount of polywatch to the crystal. We're gonna set our timer for three minutes. We're gonna polish this with our finger for three minutes. Then once that three minutes up, then I'm gonna take a soft cotton buffing wheel with a little bit additional poly watch and I'm gonna give it one minute with the polishing wheel. All right, let's start. Now I'm going to add a, a little bit of additional poly watch to the crystal and I'm going to use a soft cotton buff for one additional minute. Here we go. All right, so now let's clean it up and see what it looks like. So looking at it under the microscope, there's clearly still a lot of scratching that's left on the crystal. So clearly three minutes of the poly wash is just not enough. So it looks like we're gonna need to do an additional three minutes of polishing. We're gonna set the timer for three minutes. We're gonna add a little bit more poly watch, put three minutes on the timer, and here we go. So that's our three additional minutes. Now we're going to do one more minute with the cotton buff with poly watch 
just to detail it out a little bit more. Now let's clean it up and look at it under the microscope again. So it's clearly way better than it was. There's still some scratching left in this one lower left corner, but that could have been just because I didn't really get that area very well. Overall, it looks pretty good, um, but there's definitely scratching that's still left. Now I would imagine if you kept working it, it would improve. But just looking at the crystal from this perspective, it actually doesn't look too bad. Those very minute scratches that I saw under the microscope, you're probably not going to be able to see them with your eye. Now for the second crystal, we're going to use a piece of 1000 grit sandpaper. We're going to use a piece of 1500 grit sandpaper. And we're going to use a piece of 2000 grit sandpaper. We're going to use each grit for a total of one minute. So that would be the same as the three minutes that we did with the poly watch. And then we're gonna follow that up with one minute of detail buffing. And for that, we're gonna use a product that I use called Polenium. Now, if you saw the video I did on watch lubrication, this is the same compound that I used to charge up a felt wheel when we were polishing the oilers. And we're gonna charge up a cotton wheel with it to do one additional minute of detailing after we do the three layers. So we'll do three minutes of sandpaper and then one minute of polishing, just like we did on the watch crystal with the poly watch. So I'm gonna set the timer for one minute and then we'll just repeat that for each grit. Here we go. That's the 1000 grit. That was the 1500 grit. And that was the 2000 grit. Now I have a wheel that I use with the Palenium that I keep in a little Ziploc bag so it doesn't get contaminated. Now I'm gonna charge it up with a little bit of Palenium. Now I'm gonna put the crystal in the movement holder just to keep it from flying and we'll give it one additional minute. Here we go. All right, now let's clean it up and look at it under the microscope. Now it's probably pretty hard to see, but there are some very faint scratches that are still left around the perimeter. Um, it just looks like I might not have got the sandpaper all the way in all the way to the edge of the um of the crystal itself overall it looks really really good now in that test between the two methods of polishing crystals i would say that they're pretty much the same if i had to pick one method personally i like the sandpaper method better just because it seems like it's a little less work So now what we're going to do is we're going to take another crystal. We're going to take the same one that we used for the poly watch the first time. And we're going to take the 400 grit sandpaper and we're going to scuff it up just like we did before. But this time we're going to use poly watch and we're going to use the cotton buff to do the entire buffing for three minutes to see how that comes out. Because you can actually buy poly watch that comes with the cotton buffs. So let's see how that works. So we'll go ahead and load it up in our movement holder. And we'll take off our Palenium buff and we'll grab our PolyWatch buff. Now the one thing that you're definitely gonna wanna be careful of if you're using a Dremel or any kind of rotary tool is you're going to have to be very careful about heat because it doesn't matter what you're using. If it gets too hot, it's going to melt the acrylic. And then the crystal's just going to be, well, it's going to be worthless pretty much. So we're going to try to keep a low to medium speed. And we're going to do it for a total of three minutes 
and then we'll check it under the microscope and see how well the scratches came out. Here we go. Uh, so I didn't put nearly the same amount of scratches. Um, I didn't do the entire crystal this time, but there was certainly enough to represent what uh, a poorly or a badly scratched crystal would look like. And in this example, I see the remnants of scratches around the perimeter, but for the most part, it's not too bad and it would be passable uh, for many situations. I mean, it definitely doesn't look bad. And when you look at it, when you hold it up and look at it, it looks pretty good. This time, using the Dremel just for three minutes um, with the poly watch, with, you know, I would say typical scratching, nothing really heavy, but just typical scratching on an acrylic, the poly watch uh, actually did a really nice job. Now, what do you do if you've got deeper scratches on a crystal? How well is the poly watch going to work in this case? So what I did is I took a crystal and dragged it across the brick on the outside of my house a couple times. And now you have deep scratches in the crystal that you can actually feel with your finger now. So let's take a look under the microscope and see what this looks like. So now looking under the microscope, you can clearly see the difference in the scratches that we have now versus the scratches that we were dealing with before. So now we're going to take our rotary tool and we're going to put on our PolyWatch cotton buff. And since we're pretty sure based on the results of our first test with PolyWatch with light scratching. We know that a three minute session with the poly watch isn't going to do much. I'm going to do a six minute buff with poly watch and I'm going to replace it at about the three minute mark. I'm going to put more poly watch on the crystal and then we'll see what that looks like after six minutes. Okay, here we go. So there's six minutes of polishing with poly watch and a soft cotton buff. So let's clean it up and, and see what it looks like. So you can clearly see, not only just under the microscope, but I can tell just looking at it, that those scratches are still very prominent and the poly watch didn't really do that much at all for taking out these scratches. So apparently the abrasives in PolyWatch are not aggressive enough for deep scratches like this. Now we're going to use the sandpaper method. So to start with, because we can actually feel the scratches in the watch crystal, we're going to start off with a piece of 800 grit. Then we're going to move up to 1,000, 1,500 and then finally 2,000, and then we're going to do one minute of the Palladium on the cotton buff, and then we'll look at that through the microscope. So on this one, I'm not going to time the 800 grit because it's really just going to take as long as it needs, and I will check it under the microscope and see what it looks like. So let's get started. Now, one thing that I would point out and what I'm really looking for is we're going to use the 800 grit until all the shiny areas are gone because the shiny areas are going to be the parts of the crystal where the scratch is still deep. So if you can see those shiny areas, that's where the scratch still hasn't come out. We need to continue with the 800 grit until all those areas have been taken out. Now I'm just looking for specific areas that need a little bit more work. Still after about three minutes of sanding, 
basically we are back to a dull crystal that we're now going to use the 1015 2000 grit to bring the polish back up and then finish up finish it off with the palladium now we'll do the 1500 grit And now we'll do one minute with the 2000 grit. We've went through the 800 grit, the 1000, 1500, and 2000. Now we're going to switch to our Palladium buff, and we're going to go through one more minute with the cotton buff. Here we go, one minute. All right, so there's one minute with the Palladium buff. Let's clean it up and see what it looks like. So, I see one little scratch that I kind of missed down on that corner. A little itty bitty scratch still left in it right there, but for the most part, I would say that looks pretty good, wouldn't you? More importantly, when you hold it up and look at it, it looks shiny and beautiful, and that is good enough to put in a watch. Now, I could work a little bit more on that one corner, but when it comes to deep scratches, you really have to be able to remove some material. So if you can feel the scratch in the crystal with your fingernail, you might as well just skip poly watch all together and go straight to the sandpaper method because I can tell you that the sandpaper method of polishing acrylic with palladium will put a crystal back into new condition no matter how damaged it is. Now before I get to the bonus tip today, way back in lesson eight, I did a video on how to clean watch parts without having a machine. And I did a very basic little basket that I attached to a drill. The whole idea was not to say that that particular way was the best way to do it. It was really just to give you an idea on thinking outside the box because there's many ways to do any task. Well, I've been in contact with several different people within our community, like Stuart in South Africa, still waiting for your pictures. But I had a guy that's in our community named Derek Lewis who sent me some pictures of his cleaning machine that he's made. And that's what I want to show you real quick before the bonus tip. I think his idea was a genius. It's very simple, but it looks like it will be very effective. So let's take a look at what he did. Derek took one of these old timey hand crank drills that he bought off Amazon. And he's using that to power a basket that's inside a mason jar. So you can see he built this simple wooden frame to hold all the parts together. He unscrewed the head off the drill and then just put it in a hole in the top plate of his cleaning rack. And then he took a two and a half inch cotter pin, drilled a hole in the top of the mason jar, and he's using the cotter pin to suspend a basket under the lid that holds his containers for small parts. Now here you can see the top assembly of this rack that he's built with the basket under the lid and the cotter pin is attached where the drill bit would normally be. And then in his rack, he just drilled a hole big enough for the mason jar to hold it in place. And then the whole thing just works by hand cranking. It's a very simple system. I think these old timey drills, you can buy these on Amazon for about 20 bucks. I actually, I will put the link in with all the other products that I use today in the description in case you want to look at them. And I just think it's so cool that you guys are taking these, some of these ideas that I'm throwing out there to you and you're using your own creativity to come up with something that's even, that's way better than what I showed you. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So if anybody else has built any of these self-cleaning machines, reach out to me, let me know, because I'd love to see what it looks like. 
Now let's move on to the bonus tip for today. So now you've seen the limitations of PolyWatch. Now I'm gonna show you one more product that I use when I just need to clean up minor scratches on a watch crystal that aren't deep enough that they need to be removed with sandpaper. And that's five micron diamond paste. The 0.5 micron diamond paste basically eliminates the need to use two products. Now this is gonna work with mild scratches, but if you get into something deeper, you're still going to have to use the sandpaper first. So let me show you real quickly just what I mean. I'm going to take a new crystal, and I'm just going to scuff it up a little bit with some 400 grit sandpaper. Now let me show you what it looks like. So that is, so that would be representative of a pretty typical scratched up crystal. Now I'm going to take my rotary tool with a cotton mop. Now this particular one is really embedded with diamond paste because I use this all the time. And the more it builds up, the better it's gonna work. I take a little bit of the diamond paste on my finger and then I just rub it into the cotton buff so that it embeds into the cloth. Let's see how easy this is. So now let's clean this up and see what it looks like. So as you can see, this looks about as close as you can get to a brand new crystal by just using one product. Now again, it's not going to take out deep scratches, but for normal scuffs, not only does it remove the scratches, but it polishes the plastic at the same time. This is probably the best product I've seen for detailing out acrylic crystals. Well guys, that's going to do it for another video. And just remember, because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.